Hello and good afternoon, good day, good morning, whatever it is, wherever you're tuning in. Thanks for coming to my channel. My name is John. I'm an antique radio hobbyist and I love old AM radios. Today I want to talk about how antennas work to create the signal that your radio needs, your desktop radio, the radio in your house, needs in order to process that signal, amplify it, turn it into an audio uh, signal. I don't want to talk about that so much as I do the antenna. So today we're going to focus on how the antenna creates a signal that can be used by your radio. First, before we go there, um, there's a little bit of history that I want to talk about to kind of catch us all up to date on the same thing. And that is the, the uh, electricity that we use in our lives. The alternating current system which powers all the grids of almost every country in the world. It was created by a man named uh, Nikola Tesla and uh, it's, it's an amazing feat and uh, I'm, I want to explain real fast why they chose alternate current instead of direct current. The means by which they did that which was an electric transformer that's the magic thing that makes alternating current the winner in uh, the debate whether we should use direct current or alternating current. What we see before us here is an electric uh, transformer schematic symbol, although it also kind of shows how the transformer works. The uh, light blue part is a solid uh, metal which is amenable to, to uh, transferring electric current from one closed loop to another closed loop. The loop on the left, the red loop that you see, is called the primary loop. That comes from an electrical generator or a power station. The um, loop on the right, another closed loop, uh, is called the secondary. And that simply has electricity, AC electricity, induced into it from the first coil traveling through the metal substrate that we see. So to put things in perspective, uh, this is the actual, this is more like the actual setup. First let's add the power plant on the primary side of the transformer and then we're going to add the telephone poles and telephone wires on the secondary part of the transformer that carries the electricity to your house. So um, first of all I want to say if you are in any kind of electronics hobby or field and you don't know how electronic or electric transformers work or are not quite familiar with them you need to stop right now and go learn because this is the most important part of any electrical system. Uh, I'm not I'm not even going to touch on how this works here today other than this very simplified form showing how it works so um, I, I don't want you to think that this is an all-inclusive lesson here this is a very basic understanding of electric transform having said that let's move on uh, to explain how uh, AC became the, the best source for our electric needs. As it turns out, direct current does not travel over wires very well. Now although wires are designed specifically because they can carry electricity, uh, doesn't mean that they don't have resistance. There's a lot of resistance in there. And current, uh, which is the part of electricity, that's probably some people would say is the most important, tends to get bogged down in that resistance. However, voltage does not get quite as bogged down as current does. So the magic about the transformer and the AC system is that you can actually increase the secondary side with, with many more turns of the coil to increase the voltage and decrease the amperage or the current. And so the beauty of, of this system 
is that you can send a hundred thousand volts with a very tiny amount of current over several miles of telephone wire telephone pole wire or however it delivers to your house and then once it gets to your house it can be uh, step down uh, what you're looking at now is a step up transformer but once it gets to your house you have a step down transformer that turns it back to around 100 volts 110 120 volts and um, which is what your house would need okay now if this were a DC system you could not send DC for miles because there's no way to to convert the voltage in DC to a hundred thousand volts or really I, I don't know exactly what electric companies use but I think it's probably higher than a hundred thousand volts I don't I don't know maybe seventy thousand volts somewhere in there but um, that's not really important for this talk uh, what's important is that AC won the battle because it can travel farther reaches uh, than DC can. If this were a DC model you'd have to have a power plant about every square mile because you could only send DC so far over wires before it becomes uh, affected by the resistance in the wires. The man, the myth, the legend let's say, uh, who created our current system electricity is Nikola Tesla and uh, Nikola was working on something else and I think he pretty much accidentally discovered wireless radio signals by working on his um, beloved project of wireless electricity which is insane okay um, I don't believe it's possible, but this is what he was trying to do. Nikola believed that he could create electricity and send it into the Earth's atmosphere, uh, like the Earth's atmosphere was a huge battery that could be recharged, and uh, or like a capacitor that could be charged, and that countries, other countries around the world could tap into the atmosphere to draw that energy out. And Tesla was absolutely convinced that he could do this. I think that's insane. I, I don't think it could ever happen. Um, however, the beauty of what he did was trying to send electricity into the atmosphere. That's how he accidentally created radio waves. And I don't think he really even cared about radio waves, except he did uh, do some studies uh, later on and, and used radio waves in the form of like remote controls and such. However, it was an entirely different group of people who went on to use radio waves to establish the very first forms of wireless communication, which was like a wireless telegraph. Uh, there was a guy called Marconi in Italy and a U.S. officer uh, by, named, by the name of Strongarm who developed this wireless technology. If you ever um, saw the movie Titanic and when the ship was sinking you saw the guys in the radio room desperately typing on their telegraph uh, doodads, um, that was fairly new technology at that time. It was cutting edge technology. They were trying to reach other trips, uh, other ships in the ocean via wireless telegraph. I think that's a pretty uh, cool part of history right there. Anyhow, uh, getting back to the subject, Nikola Tesla did in fact create uh, radio signals and did work with radio frequencies and uh, no, no matter how he came about it which is going to be beneficial to our next uh, point uh, he's the guy who did it. He also created the AC motor and the AC generator which, which totally uh, transformed the world. I think he's the single most uh, uh, effective scientist the world has ever had. 
And now I want to talk about how Tesla's foibles actually became beneficial to us in the radio hobby. Okay? The first thing to understand is that there are many sources of radio frequency coming towards your tabletop radio inside your house. You might have 50 or 60 different sources. You know, you got your Wi-Fi set up. That's electromagnetic waves hitting your antenna. You've got television stations, open air. All those frequencies are hitting your little antenna. You've got flight controllers in the air. You've got uh, police, fire, emergency radio signals going back and forth constantly. There are tons of frequencies hitting your antenna. Uh, and, and that alone uh, is an impressive feat to be able to take a tuner and then tune that radio down to just one simple frequency. And, uh, you know, when we're talking about frequencies in, in kilohertz or megahertz, those are serious, seriously high frequency, uh, what I would consider high frequency uh, signals. So how does the antenna take those signals and put them into an electric signal that can be processed by the tubes and such whatnot inside your radio? And believe it or not, this is the big secret. When an electromagnetic wave hits your metal antenna, it reacts with that antenna to create a very tiny charge, electrical charge, on that antenna. So a radio frequency, say, that comes from 700 on the AM dial, which would be, I, I think, 700 hundred kilohertz or hertz that's a lot of electromagnetic waves in it one second let me tell you but anyway so you got like 700 hundred little electric pulses that defines that particular signal and so then your tuner is able to tune the antenna down to just one okay signal that signal at 700 a.m. if that's what you're talking and uh, that's how the signal is born. Now, nobody ever told me that. That might have been, you know, just intuitive for you. I don't know. But if somebody had told me that when I was 12 or 13, when I was first starting to discover uh, electronics and getting an interest in them, it would have changed my life if I knew that. Uh, and I know it sounds crazy, maybe, maybe it is intuitive to you, but nobody ever told me this. Nobody ever told me that the, the radio frequency is an electric charge. Uh, now, it's not a huge electric charge. You can put your tongue right on your antenna, it's not going to shock you. Because it's like less than a one one hundredth of a, a, a D cell battery, uh, I, I suppose, somewhere in there. It's not very strong. That's why the tubes are inside your radio to amplify that signal and uh, so that's the start that this is where we start our understanding and so now that we understand how electromagnetic waves from the radio station and power tower antenna comes to your house and induces 700 hundred electrical charges within a second on your metal antenna, I want to move back to the electric transformer because the radio tower that's sending that signal and your little antenna on top of your radio that's receiving that signal are exactly like an electric transformer, except that the radio station antenna is the one with the most turns of coil on the coil and it also has huge amounts of power pushing it out because you no longer have the solid body chassis of the electric transformer this is an air transformer and air has even more resistance than electrical wires do so by the time the signal reaches your home you know 25 miles away from the radio station it's just a very tiny amount of electricity being picked up there 
by your antenna. Um, and so that is how the electric signal, the radio signal, enters your radio as an electric, as electric pulses at a particular frequency. And your tuner then is able to tune it down to just one frequency and your radio processes that one frequency at 455 internal kilocycle. Um, it's a genius. It's a genius system. And uh, the thing that, that I recognize is that a radio tower and a radio antenna are indeed a functioning transformer, electric transformer, because that's exactly how it operates. I wish I had known this 40 or 50 years ago because uh, I'm kind of late in the game on this. Anyway, I hope this helped. If not, sorry I wasted your time. Uh, anyway, en enjoy your hobby and let me know if this helps or not. Thanks.